Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand fundamental and technical forex and gold analysis. If you're new, a very warm welcome to you and if you're returning, an equally warm welcome to you. And um, if you do like the analysis that I provide every single week um, in, the, in the market wrap up, uh, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Liking is a free way and subscribing is a free way to support the channel and it really helps the YouTube algorithm and gets the quality content. If you think it's quality content, of course, out there um, and more traders uh, seeing it. And uh, thank you to all of the uh, traders that are uh, commenting and leaving some really nice uh, comments and uh, my videos and um, and you're very, very welcome. Glad it is the free content is, is helping you to become uh, better traders and make better trading decisions. So, um, getting into really this week's um, uh, analysis as far as the fundamentals and the technicals, because that's how we really make the best decisions in trading. Technical analysis alone for me um, and for many other traders is really not enough. The banks trade fundamental analysis, so why shouldn't we trade fundamental analysis, right? And um, we're going to get into really the main pairs, which starting off is going to be the Dow Jones um, dollar index, the DX. Why, and uh, you know, from a from a technical analysis perspective, um, prices did kind of come through and go through this uh, this demand zone. And I must uh, you know uh, stress to you guys that not every single demand zone is going to work. The market determines where demand you know is right. So um, the market has now seen after about a month, really of. Uh, I would say uh, very unusual, a very unusual sell-off, especially in the face of really positive uh, data when it comes to the uh, U.S. economy. We haven't had really any kind of pullbacks or anything like that. It's literally been like a hot knife through butter. But there's been some overall, you know, negative sentiment. I wouldn't actually even really call it negative sentiment, but just a weakening sentiment of the dollar. Um, in even in the face of positive news and positive data, and um, so uh, the market would always decide as to when there is going to be demand for the dollar when the dollar is cheap, right? And and, and really more of a bargain price because that's what um, supply and demand is all about. So at the moment, we've got uh, demand now, new demand being created right here. Yeah, we've also got some supply right there as well. So um, let's see. Yeah, let's see if you know prices will range from here, or if really the dollar is seen as an absolute bargain down at these uh, down at this price on the dollar index. And if it is seen as a an absolute bargain down here, then this supply zone really shouldn't hold. These supply zones shouldn't really hold. So the dollar was seen as expensive up here, right? Was it seen as expensive? Yeah. And it's now actually seen potentially as a potential bargain right here. So let's see. But fundamentally, you know, uh, we had the um, the policy uh, statement, I guess, from the uh, Federal Reserve, and it says today, but it was the twenty eighth. That was on the Wednesday, and they they have a really an upbeat assessment on the outlook. You know, hints the first steps of a path towards tapering QE purchases. We believe that this will be announced before the end of the year and suspect uh, interest rates will rise much sooner than the Fed's current 2024 guidance suggests. So um, really now the, 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 the narrative is now shifting to rate hikes. During the coronavirus uh, last year in 2020, throughout 2020, you had central banks literally cutting and quantitative easing, you know, uh, through their ears, right? Printing money, devaluing their currency um, to help stimulate the economy. Now the economy is actually on the uh, recovery phase of the um, economic cycle. What you're seeing now is central banks and inflation rising and central banks are now looking to potentially start to taper quantitative easing so reduce the amount of money that they're printing which is usually positive for a currency as well as potential looking at rate hikes because now inflation is starting to work their way into um the the, the system right now the dollar as much as um as much as we've had really positive news you know the, the really the quote here is the fx market is more interested in signals as to when monetary accommodation or 
quantitative easing, uh, or you know, bond purchase buying, etc., will be withdrawn, and those remain lacking. That was what really the, the market was looking towards: is when will the, um, the Federal Reserve reduce their quantitative easing? And the Bank of Canada did it last uh, last week, um, and there are central banks that are looking to do it. Um, as well, and we'll get into some of the banks that are going to potentially um, reduce uh, tapering. So now it's really about the, I guess, the race. I wouldn't even really call it a race. It's more about um, the market is more fixed on um, who is now uh, tapering first of all, and when are the first rate hikes likely? The first bank who is likely to increase interest rates is really going to be the one to buy. Um, so that's something you have to look forward to or look out for if you're a fundamental trader. If you're a technical analysis trader, you don't, you don't really care about these things, even though you should, because this is what drives prices in the medium to long term. So uh, the the dollar right is is um, was setting off, and again, dollar rises most in two months on short covering data rebounds. So it's just basically just talking about the uh, the the, uh, the 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 dollar index. You know, rising. Uh, it's been really, like I said, a, a, really a whole month of, of selling of the dollar, which is again is unusual in the face of um, positive data. But let's see what happens. The dollar has to establish some sort of value, and this may be it, right? It, it needs to establish some sort of range. So this was expensive. This may be seen as a potential bargain, right, for the dollar, considering. Right, the dollar isn't going to be weak against every single currency, right? It's, you know, there's other currencies that are weaker than or potentially going to depreciate against the dollar. So dollars in in, um, in good standing when it comes to the, their economy. So let's see what happens. It's really monetary policy that's driving the price or potential future monetary policy that's driving the price of the uh, of the dollar as well as other currencies. So let's see what happens. But if you want to be a buyer of the dollar, pretty much now, you know, is the time if you want to continue selling the dollar, it's looking for, um, you know, uh, uh, sell trades on other dollar pairs like for example the dollar yen dollar swiss looking for supply zone on there and then if the uh, dollar index starts to sell off <coughs> then then um that's pretty much your, your confluence because the dollar index is just a measure of strength overall dollar strength against a basket of currencies moving on to the dollar yen and the dollar yen again with dollar strength coming in uh, the yen for me is one of the weaker out of the two currencies. Again, last week we kind of um, went over the, um, the one of the reasons why, which was uh, that Japan was potentially entering into a double dip, dip recession, or it was looming anyway, with new virus emergency. So um, the dollar having some really good news and although, although the dollar was selling off you know pretty much the whole month from like you know the beginning of april literally again it's just literally been just sells and sells until really the end of the month or towards the end of the month what we've seen now is some uh dollar strength against the yen and in a risk off in so in a risk on environment the dollar really should be the one that um, that strengthens. But what we've just seen over, if you look at where we are, is just a deeper pullback, right? If we take the, uh, the low of this move to the high, yeah, we've really just pulled back to what is known as fair value. So let me just uh, bring that up. <clears throat> All right, so this has been fair value. Again, this is seen as a bargain area. Why is that? Because prices went higher, right? There was, it was seen as an absolute cheap or bargain area. This is seen as an expensive area because prices couldn't go higher than that. So now we've just come back into what's known as fair value between a bargain and an expensive area. Um, <clears throat> so now we're just seeing uh, uh, this play out, and I do think price has you know some more upside. Now we don't know you know if price is going to get there like this or if this price is going to pull back to the zone or even price is going to pull back to this zone but the point is is that if you want to be a buyer of the dollar all you're looking for really is is buy trades and being a bit patient to see you know where the opportunities to buy are if you're looking for any kind of sell trades and you think the japanese yen to strengthen against the uh, the dollar for any reason then this is going to be a really nice technical zone but technicals really don't um you know are not the reasons why prices will move there is also a really nice some nice confluence here technically where you've got um a bit of support and resistance there 
right so <clears throat> yeah we've got a bit of resistance is there a bit of support there so right now could be a decent area to look for potential short trades if you want to get short on the dollar uh dollar swiss dollar swiss um has again been selling off just like the uh dollar index but I do think now is a really good time potentially to buy there wasn't um, there were there wasn't any daily supply and demand setups but there there has been a uh, an intraday setup um, on this uh, on this currency pair uh, potentially so let's see what happens with that for the members in the private group but we do have a bit of supply resistance just above that area there let's uh, change that to supply yeah now is this strong demand yet no because you really want to see prices make higher highs and higher lows and kind of go through that area of supply and then if you want to get long if you get a pullback that's what you're looking for um for a buy trade but the market has to prove that this is a bargain the dollar is a bargain right here against the uh, swiss franc so at the moment not quite even though i do think overall it really is and um and again, if we're looking at, for example, the low to the high, so we're looking at the year lows to the year high, yeah, we've literally pulled back to fair value. So fair value, really nice area to look for long trades. Um, if you can, if you get a setup, but just didn't come down into this daily demand zone. So uh, no long trades when it came to a daily demand zone, but there was a potential setup on. Um, for, for other other setups that we do use. So for me, I'm dollar long against the Swiss franc all the way. So uh, this is an absolute bargain. Look at the risk reward potential now. If that's the low, look at the upside potential. I think that is, a, <clears throat> that is really nice. And let's see what happens with that. But if you do you disagree and you want to go with the downside, then this is gonna be a first zone to get short, second zone to get short, and especially with some uh, potential uh, support and resistance as well that adds some confluence to that zone right there dollar cad and the dollar cad really has been a uh, um, the, the cad this i guess last week um, basically they uh, introduced tapering they tapered and so you're seeing really the effects of tapering whereas the federal reserve yeah have not tapered right they're saying that they're not really looking to taper so uh, you're getting really a bit of a divergence with the cad yeah tapering so that should be positive with the fed yeah um are not so you're seeing the cad start to sell off right so this is literally how you know you, you trade fundamental analysis or one of the criteria we look for right but what that done is, is now that's created some supply zones like this so if you do want to continue getting short on the dollar cad not necessarily a pair i'm really interested in to be fair there are, there are easier trades out there there is your first area to look for short trades here is your first or second area to get you know short on this currency pair and i think actually that zone is actually quite decent as well just from a support and resistance perspective right there that whole area you've got support bit of resistance there support support so up there around that one two five zone is uh, is decent for a potential short trade if you believe the canadian dollar is going to continue to get stronger against the uh the the us dollar Moving on to the New Zealand dollar, US dollar, and um, with dollar strength again potentially coming in. All right, we've actually just peaked above that supply zone. And prices have started making their way to the downside within this area here. If you do want to get long on the uh, New Zealand dollar, then um, this is a really nice zone to look for potential long trades. Personally, again, I'm not really interested in this currency pair. Two pretty decent currencies competing against each other. They're, they're, they're kind of hard. It's a harder trade to really kind of determine where the longer term trend will be, even though um, I think the New Zealand dollar should want to strengthen against the uh, the uh, US dollar, but let's see if that happens. If that level doesn't work out, then this is gonna be seen as the next bargain area down here if you do want to get short then you're looking for you missed out on that opportunity then that's really the area or even better this area right here which i do like technically uh moving on to the pound 
dollar and the pound dollar um, prices have been really in a bit of a range so we've got the high to the low right here yeah so you've seen prices really uh, this is an expensive area for the pound and this is seen as a bit of a bargain area for the pound and again prices came up to fair value <coughs> selling off a little bit and uh, the pound though has um, is is really kind of seen as a potential uh, buy as well the Barclays CEO sees strongest UK growth since at least 1948 so tremendous pent up demand set to fuel 6.5% expansion in 2021 rebound follows deepest economic slump in three centuries so some of the smartest guys in the room are talking about there's potentially um, you know strong uh, demand for the British pound now will that play out against for example a currency like the US dollar who also is you know on the up and up with their you know with their economy um, again there's a, this is a harder trade right you really want to look for you know economies that aren't doing so well or really kind of lagging behind in a sense before you you know you really kind of um, uh, decide what, what, what pairs to trade it's really strength versus weakness so at the moment if I was going to be a buyer right i would really kind of look for this deeper zone before looking for long trades if i was looking to be a seller i really want to look for extremes right i'm looking for extreme highs and potential you know lows right before looking at getting um long or short trading at fair value unless you know you're looking to get short here is brilliant but if you're looking to buy here it's not really the best area to look for buy trades but um i think the pound dollar is not again not really a pair that i'm you know particularly interested in simply just because uh, there are easier trades out there um moving on to the euro dollar euro dollar finally it's rolled over right we've had this whole month and this has literally been correlated to you know the dollar index we've had the whole month pretty much no pullback again very very unusual um when it comes to uh, trading because you at least get some pullback right whenever you can even in a downtrend you're getting pullbacks downtrend you're getting pullbacks yeah you're getting pullbacks of you know maybe a couple of hundred pips the pullbacks on this right have literally been um non-existent so if you consider that a pullback that's like 40 50 pips yeah so if you're trying to get short from the high to the low, you only really had like 60 pips of movement, 60 pips there, 50 pips there. I think this is probably the deeper pullback or the deepest pullback of the month, which is 86 pips. Uh, you've got, you know, 60 pips here. And then finally, you've now got 130 pips. So if you were getting short, finally, you've had a, enough, you know, um, price movement to the downside to potentially, you know, make some money. Whereas, you know, if you were looking at, for example, trading the opposite way, yeah on the uh the dollar let's say for example you're looking to buy the dollar look at the pullbacks you've had at least 136 pips here you've had at least you know 217 you've had another 219 you know you had 154 pips you've had you know pullbacks even if you were trading against the trend um you know opportunities to make money whereas if you were trading short in this you wouldn't really have had that much opportunity um unfortunately for for the month of april if you were tr if you were buying the dollar and selling the euro now the euro has been a bit of a um uh, a bit of a strange one simply because they are lagging behind but the expectation for the euro is for the euro to uh start to catch up right it's a lagging um you know the 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 um the the, the i guess with the euro lagging behind its future expectation of growth yeah so um let's have a look at the fundamentals so basically eurozone vaccine delays mean double dip recession as us booms so what happened recently was the um the uh, the eurozone did go into a technical recession which is two negative uh, quarters of growth but the market actually is looking past looking past that because what they're looking at is they're saying that Western Europe's vaccine records raise hopes and of the worst that the worst is over. So Germany and Italy report all-time highs in daily inoculations, and EU vaccine supplies are due to quadruple in the second quarter. So um, the the market really was a bit 
bit forward thinking, maybe getting ahead of itself um, and thinking that the euro was supposed to strengthen, um, you know, in April when it really didn't because of the vaccine rollout. And um, again, just a bit of a commentary, Eurozone in recession, more reaction. And it says, although Europe has lagged behind this year, economist Bert uh, Collagen of ING is confident it will start to recover in the current quarter. So what does that all mean? <clears throat> what that means is that the um, the Euro, if the, uh, the, the economy does start to recover, then we should see a higher Euro, even in the face of the dollar, you know, um, being quite strong, what is uh, happening and what the, 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 the banks are really pricing in is a higher euro dollar. Some of the banks anyway, not everyone is obviously doing that, but there's some prominent banks like Goldman Sachs, for example, that are saying that, you know, within the next uh, two to three months, you should see at least a one, two, four, one, two, five uh, euro dollar exchange rate. But that is again, dependent upon the euro really getting its act into gear but let's see what happens if you are going long then your first area to go long and buy the euro is going to be here as we've seen i'm going to delete this uh, supply zone and i'm going to draw the supply zone probably around here it's not necessarily the strongest area of supply but it is there and if you want to be you know again sh uh, long dollar and short euro then that's what you're looking for so any kind of buy trades right now potentially to the upside if you're looking to buy the euro and if that area doesn't work and you're looking for that area there and that area there i think there should be probably a deeper pullback again if we're looking at understanding where value is at the moment so this is probably expensive for the euro at the moment this is definitely seen as a bargain for the euro. I think price could probably come down to this 1.19 fair value area, or maybe even just below that zone there. Um, a bit of a pullback as you know, the longer prices go higher without pulling back, the, the deeper the pullback will be. So I think, in fact, maybe the 119 area, if you are short here, may, may be a decent target. Um, and if you're looking to buy the euro, I do think the 119 area is quite nice for a potential buy. You've also got some uh, some confluence in there as well with regards to um, some support and resistance. So it is an area that has been traded yeah, in the past. So decent, I think that area really is decent for a potential profit taking as well as um, as well as uh, just buying at potential, you know, below fair value if you're looking to buy the euro versus the dollar. Euro yen. And uh, last week I did say I was looking to buy this currency pair. I was really waiting for a bit of a stop hunt below this level and maybe a bit of a um, prices to come down into this demand zone. I really wanted prices to come down deeper into that. But as we saw this week, it just flew off, right? Flew away. So there's definitely no supply here. And the reason why I was long Euro Yen is because, and I've been saying this to the guys in the private group for the past couple of weeks, is because with the expectation that Europe should get its act together soon and start to uh, grow with the, with the Japanese Yen again lagging behind, being the worst, worst of, the, of the two, I think now any kind of demand zones, any long trades is going to be, you know, buying opportunities. So we didn't quite get, didn't quite get any kind of setup to the downside where we could have been buying the, 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 the euro for a bit cheaper. Prices have obviously gone to the upside, but if prices do manage to make their way down due to some maybe short term negative euro sentiment, then I think this 130 area is, um, is a really nice area because if you think about recent price action, this is seen as now an absolute bargain, right? Because prices went higher. Lots of traders buying in this zone. This is now seen as potentially expensive, not too sure yet, but if prices start to come back down into this area, that's the first bargain area that we want to look for by trades. And this is what supply and demand is all about. Forget this rally based drop, drop based rally because it doesn't really tell you anything about you know, value and understanding where bargains are. Yeah. It's understanding where the bargain is on a daily time frame chart. Yeah. Looking for where the, the big money are looking to trade. So I think a move back down to this 130 area, I think is going to be brilliant. If you do want to get short, um, I'm not really too keen on shorts um, from 
areas that you know were produced two years ago um, unless it was really um, I, I was really kind of fundamentally um, short on that but even then I really want to see proof of value before looking at getting long so I'm not going to draw any kind of supply zones there I do think you know we're in a we're buying opportunity when it comes to you know the euro um, and especially when we need to see the data support the narrative as well Australian dollar US dollar so again um, two really kind of competing currencies and when you get two competing currencies of, of, of you know equal strength in a sense you will get what ranging markets right you get this choppy market because nothing but good news for the for the for the US dollar but also as well the Australian dollar does have a lot of um, uh, strength and uh, good macroeconomic data so let's see what happens in the short term again um, if you want to get short on this really this was the area to look for short trades I was saying from last week if you were looking for buy trades I think I think a pullback to that 75 would be a really nice zone. Um, I'm trying to just think to myself. Yeah, I think that's probably the area. Or if you do want to get you know, long here, because we were reading a report earlier uh, this week, or was it yesterday? I think it was yesterday. I had a private mentor in session with the guys, and um, there are some banks. There is a bank that, that thinks that, in fact, we are potentially in the undervalued um price zone when it comes to the Aussie dollar so we could see price just kind of maybe pull back and from a shallow perspective and then uh, continue up to the 80 cent level this is seen as um, actually a really nice uh, target for some uh, some financial institutions but um, again it's more of a harder trade because the dollar and the, um, the US dollar and the Australian dollar are um, uh, uh, competing in a sense that um, they're, they're not diverging uh, but again, those are your options. If you do want to get long short, I do think that this area for a short trade technically is really, really nice also. But again, depends on the fundamentals. Um, Aussie yen. And again, I've been saying it's pretty much uh, for uh, months and months now, ever since last year. I think it was last year, no October, November, around here, saying to the guys in the group, go long, risk on currencies, commodity currencies. Yeah and go short on risk off currencies yeah so you've pretty much seen what's been happening and uh, again it's just understanding where we should be buying right so buying at demand zones the demand zone prices came down prices go up and prices don't go up forever right you're going to have weeks potentially days or weeks of pullbacks and even months of pullbacks right but the point being is that if you're looking at the bigger picture you understand where the bargain is yeah, that's all we're looking to do is understanding where the bargains are. So um, for me, any pullbacks into um, areas of demand uh, are buying opportunities. This may not be so much because it's touched once, twice. I'd rather wait for a level that's been touched, maybe um, that hasn't been touched or maybe touched once. So I think a deeper pullback to 8250s, I think a really nice buying opportunities and anything below that would be even better for me as a for, for for a long trade um but who knows whether we can get down there if not if prices make higher highs and maybe break through that supply zone then i'm looking for a pullback into that demand zone if there is a shift in sentiment for example there is or, or any kind of uh, economic news around the australian dollar because this is seen as quite an expensive area or could be seen as quite an expensive area from the central banks and banks, central banks actually don't want an expensive currency, they want a cheaper currency or devalued currency, then we could see some pullback. But again, pullbacks are just opportunities to buy um, a currency that you want to buy for cheaper, right? That's how <coughs> it should be looked or viewed. And finally, looking at the uh, gold and gold, um, again, has probably benefited from some uh, dollar weakness this month, pretty much it has. Uh, but the question is, why is gold going to go higher or why should gold go lower? Again, gold is driven by more of its safe haven um, uh, status. And at the moment, we're seeing a lot of risk on, you know, in the market, lots of global growth, uh, central bank hikes, for example. The one thing that gold has got going for it is potential, um, you know, uh, rising inflation so inflation meaning devaluation of a, of a currency so if inflation does get out of hand 
yeah then gold potentially would be you know a potential buy as well but um at the moment it's a bit of a difficult read for gold and looking at where gold may go in the in the short term even the medium to long term we will have our views on inflation but it depends on whether um you know that is going to play out last year for example it was very clear right from last year where the coronavirus um you know started in in march in february march and when the central bank was really kind of cutting uh, interest rates and introducing quantitative easing that was an easy trade right uh, made some money on on silver I think I did about a 55, 60 to one type trade on silver last year. Took some profit, um, took all my profit, matter of fact, this year um, in February, February and beginning of March. But now when we've had now the um, the dollar start to, um, you know, strengthen uh, global reflation um, and things are looking a lot better. Gold, I think, may is, is more of a difficult trade to read in, you know, to try and find out where it may want to go in the medium to long term. So um, for me, uh, it's not really something I'm looking at. But if you do look at gold and you want to look for uh, a trade somewhere, I'd probably say somewhere around the lows or any of these demand zones. Um, keep keep an eye as well on inflation and risk off sentiment, safe haven uh status as well stop the stock market if the stock market starts to sell off and when i say sell off i'm talking about maybe one or two days of, of of a bear you know bearish candles or even a week you need to see the narrative the narrative has to be there why is the stock market selling off if there are fears and uh, money's moving out of the stock market and into um gold bonds um then fine that's the time to really buy safe haven assets but if if stocks start to sell off it could just be profit taking right you don't know just because um, money's moving out of stocks and this profit taking doesn't mean it's moving into gold and moving into government treasury bonds does it it just means that you know it might be moving into cash for example so um so gold for me is is, is a bit of a tricky one technically um there are some nice zones but doesn't mean you should trade the asset class if it's not clear you really want um you know to take the easier trades and when i say easy trades you want to take the easier trades fundamentally and the easier trades at the moment are really kind of buying commodity currencies versus, you know, safe haven currencies like the Swiss franc and the Japanese yen. Anyways, guys, that's pretty much um, it for this week. Um, until the next video, I hope you have a great trading week and take care.